welcome or welcome back to my channel by Emwu. I'm Emwu, aka Marianne, and today we'll be talking about everything that I've knit slash crocheted in 2023 thus far. I know that these videos are usually pretty popular at the end of the year because people use them as kind of like a yearly recap. I was thinking about doing that and I probably will do a part two to this, but I thought it would be fun to do like a mid-year update and talk about the stuff that I've made over the last six months. In part, I think if I save it all to the end, that video would be very long. And then two, I frankly would have forgotten about a lot of the stuff that I've made, even though I try to document it and keep it in like Ravelry or whatnot. I think every six months is probably better for my mental sanity than trying to accumulate it all to a year. So if you guys want to see what I've been up to over the last six months, and some of this stuff is new. I haven't talked about it yet on this channel because I didn't start this channel till a couple months ago. Grab something fun to knit on or a cool drink and let's get started. As a quick disclaimer, I wanted to say that just because I've made this much over the last six months doesn't mean that there's any pressure for you to have felt that you had to have made this much as well. I'm doing this out of the fun that I get while creating. And if you're a faster or slower knitter slash crocheter, that's totally cool. I think as long as you're enjoying the process or the end goal, whichever one is your preference, like by all means, I'm just sharing this because I thought it would be fun to kind of have like a little bit of a recap and kind of relive some of the projects because a lot of this stuff that I'm looking at, I scattered around the floor. I haven't seen in quite some time because they were either winter knits or something that I've just kind of forgotten about since I've moved on and it's fun to see how I've progressed over time. As a last caveat, I'm gonna note that I definitely do have some crochet items. There are more crochet items early on Take that as you will. Most of them are knitting. How I think I'm gonna structure this is I'm gonna go through the months and talk about projects that were completed in the order of completion, if that makes sense. So the very first one is kind of a freebie one. I'm throwing this in here, not because it technically fits in, like it fits in here based off the definition of it was finished in 2023, but to be frank, the bulk of it was done last year. <laughs> that is, my temperature blanket. It doesn't look too impressive now because it's been rolled up, but it is this ginormous blanket that I crocheted last year. And if you guys have been following me along on Instagram, you might have seen this in the works over the course of last year. This is essentially a labor of love over 2022. I crocheted a row a day for the whole year where the color of that row corresponded to, I used the average temperature of that day. And this is by no means an idea that I came up with. I saw it on TikTok at the end of 2021 and was inspired to make one. And I actually committed to it and finished it. It's ginormous. I don't even remember the final measurements. It's somewhere on my, I think it's like two meters by like one and a half meters or something in length. and. I love it. I didn't follow a pattern. I just kind of did a single crochet chain every day for however long I want it. It's not a square. Um, sorry, it's definitely not a rectangle. And I did this little trim border at the end. Um, it's by no means a perfect project, but it means a lot to me. It has a lot of memories. Uh, some notable mentions are the first cold day of the year back up here in January was the day we moved into our house. And then the first light green day here in May was Ryan and Maya's wedding day. And so I had so much fun making this. It was definitely not a project for the faint of heart. And honestly, I still haven't even blocked it. I wanted to steam block it this spring, but never got around to it. <laughs> I quickly forget. I crocheted this up in Knit Picks Brava, which is an 100% acrylic yarn. Um, I think it's worsted weight. And it was a pretty good yarn to work with. I have since learned that I don't love acrylic, but at the time I wasn't really experienced in any kind of like tech, or in any fibers of yarn. And so I made do with it. And overall, I do think it's a decent quality acrylic. If you're wondering about the colors that I used, as well as the corresponding temperature ranges, I will post a photo of the colors and the ranges right here. So this is my ginormous temperature blanket kicking off the year strong. 
I finished it the first day of 2023. <laughs> okay, moving on to the next finished object of the year was my knit dicky, and it is this really cute turtleneck just kind of panel that is supposed to be a scarf replacement. I think they're really common in children. And this is the project that I can attest to kicked off my knitting frenzy. Essentially, I found this free pattern on Pinterest one day for like, I, I don't know when the pattern is from, but it's, it's a vintage pattern. And I fell in love with it. I don't, it was like a very simple pattern. It looked like this. It had this really clean, like two by two ribbing and was done in worsted weight as well. Um, and I just, I, it was the thing that was like, I really want to knit that. So actually when I was ordering the last round of yarn for my temperature blanket, I threw in a couple skeins, skeins. My sister said it's skeins. I don't remember. I don't actually know which one it is. I threw in a couple balls <laughs> of knit picks, uh, wool of the Andes in the colorway crane heather and knit this up. And I think I mentioned in my old, one of my old podcasts that my knitting love got kicked off when I finally figured out how to read knits and this was the project I was reading it. Knitting this up, this is the first project I picked up in like years. Anytime before that, I wasn't reading what I was knitting. It was 100% like luck slash just hoping that I'm following the pattern correctly. But this was the one that things just started clicking. Like I, I figured out how to count knit stitches. I could finally distinguish between knit and purls. It was, and I think part of it was that it just, it knit up so beautifully and I love it so much. It's such a cute turtleneck. I'm gonna put it on. But yeah, it looks like this. You can wear them under shirts and stuff if you want like a turtleneck look or um, primarily I wear it under like jackets so I don't have to wear a scarf. And I adore it. It's a really simple pattern. It's still free on Pinterest if you guys want to knit it up. I would definitely recommend. My only comment about this one is that the Wool of the Andes by Knit Picks, it's a really lovely Peruvian wool um, and they have a lot of great colors, but it's a little itchy. So one thing about this being a turtleneck is that it's a little scratchy. Um, so if you're really sensitive to like the scratch factor, I probably would pass on using this for something close to skin. But yeah, my Knit Dicky. This is the product that 100% kicked off my love and I still love it. I think it looks very classic. And overall, given that it was like my first time knitting, I think it's like very uniform. There's a line here from storage, but. I will mention that that yarn is relatively affordable. So if you're looking for a budget friendly wool yarn, I would recommend it in that sense. The next project that I finished up was actually a baby blanket for a friend of mine. And I no longer have it because I gifted it to her upon completion. And I'll post a picture of it right here. It essentially was a half double crochet chevron navy blue baby blanket that um, I kind of whipped up pretty quickly and sent it her way. I don't actually have a really big memory of this project besides the fact that I did it. I think I used some generic acrylic yarn from the craft store that, albeit the quality was worse than the Knit Picks Brava that I just talked about, I remember it being more squeaky. And I also remember that project being the one where I was like, okay, I think I'm done with crochet. I'm gonna move into knitting a little bit more aggressively because I was doing that blanket and the dicky at the same time. And my love for knitting was really coming through. And so post that blanket, after I sent it out for her and took a couple photos, I kind of moved on from crochet. <laughs> the next project here is my probably, it was my biggest project at the time when I finished, even though it's a relatively small piece and that's my hat. So this hat here is the Fab Beanie by Clara Eggers. This pattern I believe is only posted in one of her Instagram posts. I don't think she has it published anywhere else. It's a free pattern in one of her Instagram captions. And I fell in love with her Fab cardigan, which I made and I will talk about in a bit. Um, but before I wanted to dive into that and when I was ordering the yarn for that cardigan, I was like, maybe it'll be fun to do a beanie kind of like as like a 
quick start. This was my first time doing brioche stitch, which was an experience to learn. And this is made in We Are Knitters, The Wool in the Colorway Natural and Hand Painted Sprinkle, which is this really pretty like purple, pink, like a whole bunch of different colors like thrown together. This yarn was really interesting to work with because it's not spun, I don't think. So it's like really fluffy and squishy and it makes this ginormous hat. I like, it's a vibe. <laughs> it makes my head really, really big, but it's really, really warm. And honestly, this last winter that we had where it was like snowing all the time, it was just like so cozy. I have since moved on from this hat and brioche stitch, but wearing it brings me so much joy, even though I know I look a little ridiculous. <laughs> Some quick comments about this hat and the pattern is because Clara Eggers posted it as like a caption, um, I don't think it was the most easy to follow pattern, especially for someone like really early on in their journey. Uh, while figuring out the brioche stitch in the round while changing colors, it, it wasn't fun. I had to rely on a YouTube video, which it was a good YouTube video, but also not a great one, if that makes sense. And I don't think brioche stitch in the round with alternating colors is like a very, very, very commonly used stitch pattern. Like I think a lot of people prefer stock and deck or garter stitches to that. Um, it was a labor of love to finish this one. I remember starting it on like a Friday evening and you start, it starts at the bottom of the rim and then you move up into the crown and it just took me forever. It's, I'll roll it down so you can see what it looks like. This is the opposite side. Um, I remember, I think I did this hat inside out and then I ended up just flipping it at the end because I could not figure out exactly what she was asking me to do from the pattern. I don't know if I would be able to do it any better now. And I will say that her Fab Cardigans pattern was a lot more intuitive. Um, but yeah, this was overall actually not that fun of an experience to do as a very beginner knitter. I did have a lot of fun with the pom-pom. I had experience making pom-poms from when I was little. My mom used to make them for suitcases. So this was really fun to do in this really like fluffy textured yarn. And then the last thing I had was because that the gauge was really big, I had to add an elastic in so that it didn't flare out too much. But I used the wrong elastic. I used like those clear like friendship bracelet ones, which after wearing it for a while, you get like this line on your forehead. I have since purchased better elastics. I should switch it out, but I haven't got around to it. But the Fab Beanie. If you're curious to making one, I would say go for it. Um, but I will say it wasn't the best knitting experience, but that might be an testament to my skill level at the time. The last project rounding off January was another knit beanie, but this one was a gift knit for my cousin-in-law's son. And the funny story about this one was, it wasn't a difficult hat. I just decided to do like a last minute baby hat for them. And it was just a two by two ribbed hat with, um, I folded up rim. We had dinner plans to meet up with Ryan's cousins and I thought it would be fun to knit their little kid a little something and I started it the night before. I remember distinctly sitting in like, it was wintertime, snowy traffic, trying to frantically finish this hat on the way there and weaving in the ends like five minutes before we were supposed to have dinner. <laughs> Um, I didn't have time to block it. The photo that I have of it, you can tell that it's like all bunched up, but in my mind, it was thought that count in this case. And I had a lot of fun, a little bit of stress knitting that up. And um, yeah, it was just a little thing that I just threw in. That was knit in some leftover Knit Picks Brava in the color Persimmon, for those that were wondering. I don't actually remember the mindset that I was in when I started February. I know I was still very much into knitting, but I don't have a good recollection of like what point I was in projects. Based off finished objects, I had two. One was a knit one and one was like a finished up crochet project from years ago. And the first one was Ryan's blue socks. These are the first pair of socks that I knit for Ryan. 
you can tell that the ends are not weaved in and that's just how I whirl. Um, they're also not blocked because I don't have a sock blocker, but he's been wearing them and he really likes them and that's what really matters to me. The pattern that I followed for this was a Tin Can Knits free pattern. I don't remember the name, but it's a plain vanilla sock with um, purling over the front as opposed to just like stock in it in the round. And these were my labor of love for that month. I remember being really excited to knit Ryan socks because he doesn't have a knit sock collection. I have a pretty big one because when my sister was in her knit sock phase, she made me a whole bunch. And so with Ryan not having any means that I get to knit him a whole bunch. And this was the start of them all. I knit this up in some random sock yarn that my sister gift gifted to me a while ago. So I don't know who the dyer is. It was a hand dyed yarn and I honestly don't know anything about this yarn besides that it's 100% wool. I don't even know if it's super wash, but admittedly, Ryan has thrown these in the whole wash. They, they get left and that's all that matters. I had to knit the sock portion very long because he has very long feet. <laughs> but these are what I've been calling his blue socks. At the same time, I was also in trying to just like wrap up some loose ends in some other projects. And so I had all these daisy grainy squares from a long time ago. Um, these are a combination of the Knit Picks Brava as well as some just generic store-bought acrylic yarn. And I had all the pieces in February and was like, you know what, I'm just gonna finally put them together. So I finished this in February. I used the Join As You Go pattern to do them all up and I think it's so adorable. I'm waiting for someone to have a baby girl so I can get this. I guess my sister had a baby girl, but sorry Steph, you didn't get one. <laughs> didn't really follow a pattern. I remember seeing these daisy squares on a TikTok and kind of just fudged it. So I'm sure there are granny square patterns around with the daisy, but I kind of just made it up. But yeah. That was another completed project. That's the last crochet project that I've done in a very long time. Maybe I'll go back to crochet sometime. I don't know, I just don't find it as enjoyable as anything. Moving along into the third month. The first one is yet another smaller project and these are the Nova felted mitts I made for Ryan. Um, they're very oddly shaped. He calls them his oven mitts, which I mean, It's not really wrong. I made these for him because when we first started dating, I knit him a pair of green mitts. Um, I guess that was a project that I did a while ago, but I knit him a pair of just random green mitts and he loves them, but they're very holy. I don't think I used the right needle size for them and so the gauge is like really loose. And so when he was like using them in the winter time, he was basically like, these are kind of useless. The wind just goes straight through them and my hands are cold. So as a compensation, I made him really thick felted mitts, albeit they're very big still. The felting didn't work as well as I thought they were. This was, I believe, a free pattern. Um, I don't remember the designer, but I found this on Ravelry and I used Will of the Andes by Knit Picks, um, some leftover color from the dicky that I made back in January and I threw them into the wash tried to kind of felt them I think they're still a little big but he says they work really well so I've kind of left them but these ones are super super warm and this was kind of fun because it was the first time I've tried felting I didn't work as well as I thought it was going to and I think that's because the cycle that I was using it in my washing machine it was too short for the hot water to actually like start and so I was felting it in cold water, which is not the same as felting it in warm water because felting works best from what I understand when you have heat and friction. Um, so we were missing the heat, but like I said, Ryan likes them the way they are. So I'm just gonna leave them. Not my cleanest work, but definitely really warm for the winter. All right, so the next two finished objects of March were garments and this kind of now, now it's bringing back memories as to why I had a lot of like smaller finishing projects because I was spending so much time on these ones. One, both of which you guys have seen before, uh, one more than the other. 
The first one was my square neck cami by Helen Biba. I won't go into too much detail about this because I've talked about it at length in some previous videos, no, most notably the most recent podcast as well as the seven summer patterns that live that are living in my head rent free. So if you want to hear more about that, go check it out there. It's this beautiful three by three ribbing and fingering weight yarn. Um, been getting a ton of wear because it's been really warm. And I know I've talked about this a ton, but I knit this up in Knitting for Olive Merino in the colorway Mushroom Rose. I still love this. I won't go on about it because I've talked about this sh so much in the past. So the next one is my Fab Cardigan. You guys haven't seen this one in a while because it's been so hot. But this cardigan is the kind of counterpart to the Fab um, beanie that I made early on. And for those of you who don't know, Fab is actually an acronym. Um, it's for Fluffy Brioche. And yeah, I, I think it's a well-named, obviously a little more crude of a name, hence the abbreviation, but I adore this cardigan. This cardigan was like the first big garment that I was like, I really want to make that. And like I mentioned, it's knit up in brioche stitch. This one I used the petite wool by We Are Knitters in the same colorways as the hat. So in natural as well as the hand paint and sprinkle. And you can see the colors a little bit better here in terms of like the blues and the pinks and the yellows and the greens. And it's just such a joyous sweater. This is like the most colorful thing that I've made. And I adore it, 100% would recommend it. It's such a squishy sweater and it's so warm. I remember finishing it and it being pretty warm when I finished in March and being kind of upset about it because I was like, I really want to wear it. And then mother nature gave us an ice storm like the following week so I wore it that day. I'm not saying that I liked the ice storm because it caused a lot of tree damage in our neighborhood which was really sad but it was really nice to wear this cardigan especially after spending so much time. This cardigan was the true definition of showing me the amount of love that goes into knit garments. It also taught me that I have second sleeve syndrome really bad. Doing the first sleeve was fine. Oh man, it was such a trek to do the second sleeve. I think I got to the point where I was like, okay, I have to do like two rows a day or else this will never finish. But then once I finished, it was great. It has this lovely balloon decreasing into this like really nice twisted rib. And I cannot wait to pull this out next winter to wear it again because it brings me so much joy. I think the colors are so fun. Ever since then, I've been making a lot more neutrals, which seeing this really gets me into this colorful mood again. I'm kind of envisioning a colorful fall and winter knit potentially, but we will see. Definitely recommend this pattern. Claire Eggers is so sweet. She has a really fun Instagram account and I love all the stuff that she makes. And if you're interested in making this, I would definitely recommend. My only comment to the yarn is I haven't worn it enough to see how it holds up. I do suspect it will pill a lot. I've only worn it this sweater maybe twice and it so far looks pretty good, but it's definitely very fuzzy. Um, and I think that's an testament to the fact that it's not a twisted or a, is it called twisted? Yarn? I don't remember. I don't remember the term for it, but it's not like um, a wound yarn, if that makes sense. And so the fluffiness and the fiberness kind of makes sense, but that's just something to be aware of. Um, overall, it was a really good knitting experience. It has the beautiful like properties of the really springy wool because it hasn't been wound. And yeah, it makes a really fun sweater. We're getting closer into the next three months, but I didn't have any finished objects for April. I don't remember what I was working on at this time. Actually, that's not true, I do. I, it's the stuff that I finished the following month. In the month of May is when I finished up my Aorsta Summer Tea, and this is by the Knit Pearl Girl. This was right around the time when I started this YouTube video, so 
I think in my first podcast I'm wearing it because I just finished it up around that time. And it's this really beautiful t-shirt. I did it in the recommended yarn, which is Santa's Garden Sunday in the colorway Acorn, which is this really beautiful warm brown color. And it has this repetitious, I think it's called Azulian stitch. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong. And it's just, it was the perfect texture knit in my mind where the repeat was enough to keep you engaged, but it wasn't so complicated that you wouldn't be able to like watch TV or listen to a podcast. The pattern was pretty easy to understand. I knit a weird size between extra small and small in the sense that it's an extra small, but the increased stitches for the sleeves followed a small for some reason. I think I was trying to accomplish a bigger area underneath the arms. I don't know if I actually succeeded in that, but overall I love the shape and I wear it a lot. Because it's basically DK weight wool, it's been a little hot for the last few days um, where I live and I don't know if it's been across like the northern hemisphere, but we've been like shattering heat wave records. And so 100% wool's been a little warm for that. Um, but I'm excited for the cooler days coming, hopefully uh, to wear this again. My only comment about the pattern is that it does have a little bit of short row shaping in the top to accommodate for a lower front neckline. I think it could have done with a little bit more. At the time, this was my first time doing short row shaping. Actually, that's not true. The Fab Cardigan had it too, but I don't think I knew what I was doing at the time. I was just kind of following the pattern. Um, but I think this shirt could have benefited from a little bit more. Other than that, it was a really easy to follow pattern. I think a beginner definitely, I think a confident beginner could definitely get away with it. Um, and it's got this really clean raglan increases on the sides. But love this shirt. Would make another one in a different color if there weren't so many patterns that I want to make. But may I wear this on top. This was also the month that I finished another pair of socks for Ryan. These are just vanilla socks, um, loosely based off of Hermione's Everyday Socks by Erica Lauder. And I call these Ryan Sunset Socks because I knit these in Opal Sunset, I think is what the yarn was. Frankly, I'm not 100% sure what that yarn was. I know it's Opal Sock Yarn, but my mom gave me a ball of it a while ago and I just knitted up. I really liked it. It's kind of more of a rustic sock yarn, um, but I think it works really well. It definitely feels like a good sock yarn, if you know what I mean. Like, it will last. Again, Ryan has thrown these into the wash and they seem fine. Minus the fact that they don't look like they were blocked because they weren't. And again, with the loose tails. <laughs> Anybody else like this? I should just weave them in, but I don't know. It's kind of fun just having them, right? I, that's what I tell myself. This was also the time where I was working on a head scarf. So this is the Penelope kerchief by, oh, I don't remember the designer. I will put them on the screen and in the description below as always. But this was my first time doing like a lace motif and following a charted pattern. This is a free pattern if anybody wants to make one. And I don't get as much wear about, out, out of this as I do. Would like. I'm not really big of like a headscarf person, but I thought it was really cute. This is knit up in the same yarn as my square neck cami, which is the knitting for olive merino and the colorway mushroom rose because I had a leftover ball from that. Um, loved the experience of this though. And although I didn't wear it to the cottage trip that we took in May, it reminds me of that trip because I was making it for that trip. I just didn't finish it in time. <laughs> That brings us into June and my last finished object for the first half of the year. I also won't talk about this too, too much because I've talked about it at length in a couple podcasts, but it is my, not mine, Ryan's Alpaca Musser Burrow. Um, this is where I fell in love with the Musser Burrow hat as well as baby alpaca yarn. The yarn is so luxurious. It's and it makes it even better that it was a local yarn. If anybody is new and is not aware, when I went to that cottage chip in May, there was a local alpaca farm. And so I picked up two skeins of, two skeins, two skeins. I'm like self-conscious about that word now. I picked up two hanks of the yarn in this beautiful burnt orange color, as well as 
this like warm tone brown and I knit up Ryan Allen Alpaca Muscle Burrow Hat by Yolinda Teague. I have nothing but good things to say about this pattern. I've already said nothing but good things about this pattern and will continue to do so. I followed the adult medium size and the only modification that I did for this was I added um, one by row ribbing in the bottom as opposed to just a full stock in it. And I love this hat, Ryan loves this hat. The only comment that I have about it is that it has a little bit of belling and I think that's less so from the pattern and more so by the shape of Ryan's head and how he likes to wear it. I mentioned that he likes to wear it on like a diagonal. I will try to like that, which increases the circumference that wasn't originally planned for. Cause I think most people tend to wear this hat with the rim folded up like as a beanie this way. And you can tell that the circumference isn't as aggressive, but garments are meant to be worn. Garments are meant to be loved and, Lion, and Ryan wears and loves it in the other format. And so who am I to judge? But this is, this is what the third hat that I made. Well, I say that as I segue into my honorable mentions. This section is just some miscellaneous projects that I made throughout this whole time period. That is just a handful of baby hospital hats. So the premise of these ones was, I did a lot more of these at the beginning of the year. I have five here in this persimmon color, in this fig color, and this yellow color. These two you might have recognized from the temperature blanket, they were leftover yarn. and. At the beginning of the year, I had this goal where I was going to make a baby hat every week so I could donate them to the local hospital. The pattern is just follows the hospital pattern that they kind of published on their website. And I was really into it, partly to use up just some miscellaneous yarn as well as to help around with the community. I kind of fell off that. I definitely want to get back into it. But these are my honorable mentions because I just kind of made them throughout the year. and. I think they're so cute. Can you imagine your head being that small? I mean, like, come on, a newborn hat. So adorable. So there you have it, everything that I've knit up in the last six months or so. I have since started and I'm working on a couple more projects and so those will be coming up and be talked about in my next podcast video. I also have quite a few plans, not like concrete, but like a lot of slewing thoughts in my mind for what I want to do for the fall and winter time. So hopefully we'll get a lot more knitting in for the second half of this year and we can do a part two update in December or early next year. If there's anything you guys saw that you want to learn more about or like had questions about, you can one, check out my Ravelry page. I try to keep that up to date as possible. I'm not great at doing notes, but I at least put all the yarn that I use as well as the needle size and the pattern details in there. Um, I might have talked about it in a past podcast video, so feel free to check those out too. I think it starts from the Aorsta top onwards. So anything in the second half of what I've talked about might have been mentioned in a podcast video. Or three, feel free to message me either in the comments below or DM on Instagram and I'd love to chat with you more there. If you had any cool things that you finished up over the last six months, I would love to hear about that as well. And I think that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thank you so, so much for watching and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye friends. I now have to go clean up this ginormous pile of a mess. <laughs> <laughs>